He is known for his contributions to the music publishing business and his skills as a composer. He recognized the potential of Franz Schubert and became the first to publish his work. His name is Anton Diabelli. In the bustling city of Vienna in 1803, a young and ambitious musician named Anton Diabelli arrived, ready to make his mark on the world of music. He wasted no time and began teaching piano and guitar, while also working as a proofreader for a music publisher. It was during this time that he honed his skills in composition and learned the intricacies of the music publishing business. In 1809, Diabelli reached a significant milestone in his career when he composed his comic opera, Adam in Der Klemm. This marked the beginning of his journey towards recognition and success. In 1817, he took a bold step and established his own music publishing business. However, it was in the following year that he found a true partner in Pietro Capi, and together they formed the renowned music publishing firm of Capi and Giabelli. The duo quickly gained popularity by arranging popular pieces that could be enjoyed by amateur musicians in the comfort of their own homes. Diabelli's keen sense of promotion led him to select widely accessible music, including famous opera tune arrangements, dance music, and popular new comic theater songs. It was through these endeavors that the firm began to garner respect in more serious music circles. One of Diabelli's most significant contributions was his recognition of the talent and potential of a young composer named Franz Schubert. In 1821, Diabelli became the first to publish Schubert's work with the iconic piece, Brokenate. This marked the beginning of a fruitful partnership between the two, as Diabelli's firm continued to publish Schubert's works until 1823. Unfortunately, an argument between Capi and Schubert ended their collaboration, leading Diabelli to part ways with Capi and establish his own publishing house, Diabelli and Company, in 1824. Diabelli's dedication to preserving the legacy of Schubert was unwavering. Following the composer's untimely death in 1828, Diabelli purchased a significant portion of Schubert's unpublished works from his brother Ferdinand. This allowed Diabelli's firm to publish new Schubert works for over three decades after the composer's passing, ensuring that his genius would continue to resonate with generations to come. As the years went by, Diabelli's publishing house flourished, and he eventually retired in 1851, entrusting the firm to the capable hands of Carl Anton Spina. When Diabelli passed away in 1858, Spina changed the firm's name to C.A. Spina Vormals Diabelli and continued to publish music by notable composers such as Johann Strauss II and Joseph Strauss. The firm's legacy endured as it was later taken over by Friedrich Schreiber and merged with the company of August Kranz in 1876. Anton Diabelli's tireless dedication to music and his keen eye for talent left an indelible mark on the world of music publishing. His partnership with Franz Schubert and his contributions to the accessibility of music for amateur musicians cemented his place in history. Diabelli's legacy lives on, reminding us of the profound impact one individual can have on the field of music. In the early 19th century, Anton Diabelli, a composer with a knack for promotion, embarked on a unique musical project. In 1819, he came up with the idea of publishing a collection of variations on a patriotic waltz he had written. He envisioned a collaboration that would bring together the most renowned composers of the time, both Austrian and non-Austrian, to contribute their own variations to the anthology. This ambitious endeavor was to be called Baderlandischer Kunstlerverein. Hashtag continue hashtag to his delight, Diabelli received responses from 51 composers, including some of the biggest names in the music world. Beethoven, Schubert, Archduke Rudolf of Austria, and Franz Xaver Wolfgang Mozart were among those who eagerly contributed their variations. Even an eight-year-old Franz Liszt joined in on the project. Carl Czerny, another talented composer, was tasked with writing the concluding coda. Hashtag continue hashtag however, the most remarkable contribution came from Beethoven himself. Instead of submitting just one variation, he astonishingly composed 33 variations, which formed part one of Vaterlandischer Kunstlerverein. These variations, now famously known as the Giabelli Variations, Op 120, are considered one of Beethoven's finest piano compositions and the greatest set of variations of its time. They showcased Beethoven's genius and musical mastery, solidifying his status as a legendary composer. Hashtag continue hashtag the remaining 50 variations were published as part 2 of Vaterlandischer Kunstlerverein, completing the anthology. Diabelli's promotional idea had turned into a monumental achievement, bringing together the works of the most influential composers of the era. The Diabelli variations, with Beethoven's extraordinary contributions in the forefront, became a testament to the creativity and collaboration of the musical community during that time. Do you want to explore more composers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.